All right, so this is the first goal of the match, courtesy of a Nate Harrier header. And so you can see highlighted here on your screen. Uh, everybody that's circled in the red, that's Columbus playing man marking. And then the three players in the green circle, they're playing a zonal marking. Notice how all three of those players are on the near post because the Union typically like to send their corner kicks towards that near post. And so Columbus has three men lined up right there, as you can see on your screen. Nate Harrier unmarked here on this play. And before Kai Wagner takes this corner kick, I want to point something out. It's going to be the run from Mikhail Ua and Julian Kranzler. It's going to pull seven Columbus players towards that near post because, like you just mentioned, the Union typically take their corner kicks towards that near post. And so the two runs from these two players takes all the attention away from Nate Harriel, which allows him to have a free header right here on this play. Nate gets up. Goal for the Philadelphia Union their seventh goal off of a set piece this season. Nate Harriel coming up big here on the corner kick. Great delivery by Kai Wagner. And the Union, a lot of set pieces this game. A lot of times in this game, the Union won the first header. Couldn't put the shots on target. But the start of the second half, uh, the Union come out and get a goal through Nate Harriel. Great delivery. Notice, like I said, all the Columbus players that run towards Julian Carranza and Mikel Ua allows Nate Harriel to have that free header. Nobody's up there to contest Nate's header. Perfectly timed jump. Great moment for the Union to score right at the start of the second half. And this goal conceded by Columbus was a 10th set piece given up on the season. All right, so this is the second and final goal of this match. This one comes courtesy of a Cucho Hernandez penalty kick for Columbus. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the build-up to this play that led to the free kick that eventually led to the penalty kick off of a Jack Elliott handball. And so you're going to have Rudy Camacho play this ball into Cucho Hernandez. Jack Elliott fouls him. And initially, the referee points free kick for the Union. And then the referee changes his mind and says, no, it's a free kick for Columbus. And we'll go ahead and watch this foul. I do think the referee got this one Correct, after watching the replay, you're going to see Jack Elliott get the right foot of Cucho before he gets the ball. Cucho is trying to trap this ball, and Jack Elliott makes contact with that right foot there. Good call by the referee, which then leads to this free kick opportunity for Cucho and Columbus. And this ball is just going to go ahead and hit off of Jack Elliott's elbow, and the referee points to a penalty plus a yellow card, and Kai Wagner can't believe this, but we can see Jack Elliott jumping here, and now his elbow is going to come, extend out, and there's the penalty kick. If Jack Elliott's not extending his arm right there, that's not going to be called a penalty. But because Jack Elliott's making that motion, making his body bigger, the referee points to the penalty spot, and I have no problem whatsoever with this call on the field. Kucho Hernandez steps up here for this penalty kick, sends Andre Blake the wrong way, and Columbus have their first and final goal of this match. As we all know, this game ends 1-1. Huge goal here for Cucho Hernandez. His eighth goal in his last five matches. He's been on fire, single-handedly carrying Columbus in for a top-four spot they are eyeing for. And this game right here has huge implications for who's going to host home field advantage and potentially that best-of-three series. And it could very well be these two teams, Columbus and Philadelphia Union. A big moment here in this game. Huge goal for Columbus and Cucho Hernandez. That sees this game tied at one apiece. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at some moments in this game, chances that the Union had, and then we'll look at some saves by Andre Blake that kept the Union in this match. I think at the end of the day, a 1-1 result is probably the fair result between Columbus and Philadelphia. The Union couldn't capitalize on some of the chances that they were gifted by Columbus. And uh, we'll see in the next set of videos, huge moments for Columbus. But Andre Blake is showing why he's one of the best goalkeepers in MLS. So the first chance that the Union have in this game comes from Quinn Sullivan. It's going to go ahead and be a miss pass by Aiden Morris. Quinn's going to go ahead, intercept, and now he's in there with a chance. Amundsen does a good job to recover, force Quinn to 
go backwards. It's an ongoing run by Bedoya. Gets taken down. Potential penalty for the Union. We see Quinn Sullivan quick to react again off of that miss pass by Aiden Morris. Again, good recovery by Amundsen to force Quinn to lift his head and find this pass by Bedoya. Uh, we initially thought that this was going to be a penalty kick for the Union. Jim Curtin said after the match he believed this was a penalty kick, but the referee did not give this on the field. You can see a challenge by Darlington Agby and then the challenge by Aiden Morris. It looks like Bedoya is right behind that line, not inside that box, and that's why the referee opted for no penalty. Chance number two for the Union comes off of a set piece. Uh, just like we saw with the Nate Harrier goal, uh, we see Ali Bedoya being man-marked by Matan, and then we have the guys circled in the green rectangle playing a zonal marking, protecting that near post where the Union like to typically go. And Bedoya's going to win this initial header, and Jack Elliott's going to have a free shot on goal. Can't put this in the back of the net. And this is terribly defended here by Columbus. Huge opportunity wasted here. Great header by Bedoya. Jack Elliott gets by his guy and just can't put this shot on target. But you can see all the players for Columbus that were occupied going towards that near post. Nobody tracks Jack Elliott. Chance number three, though, here for the Union. We should see the Union head this ball away. And it's going to be given away here back to Columbus, and the Union are going to do a good job winning this ball back yet again, and the Union are now going to go in a couple passes, and they're going to have a shot. It's Jack McGlynn and Jesus Bueno, and then Jesus Bueno is going to find Quinn Sullivan. This is just fast soccer here by the Philadelphia Union, making something out of nothing. Quinn Sullivan does a good job to free himself and then have that shot outside the box. Goalkeeper had this covered, but good opportunity there by the Union. Chance number four, again, typical Philadelphia Union soccer. Long ball up top by Jack Elliott. Union win the initial header. Takes a deflection off of a Columbus player. Daniel Gaza gets by his Moran way too easy. Ops for the pass inside of the shot into Mikel Ua. And Columbus, very fortunate here on this play. Steve Marrera has a huge block here on this play. You can see Daniel Gaza, one touch, passes guy, way too easy, gets caught flat-footed, sees the run by Mikael Ua, just cannot connect because of this huge block by Steve Marrera. This is a huge moment in this game that could have seen the Union go up another goal. Then we have a chance here, huge turning point in this match. Julian Kronza gets taken out by Amundsen. Mikael Ua, in on goal, hits the post. No goal. Huge wasted opportunity. And the referee played an advantage. If Mikael Uwe wouldn't have ran onto this ball, this is dogs out, denial of a goal-scoring opportunity, and Amundsen sent off. But because the referee plays the advantage, sees that Mikael Uwe can get to this ball, Columbus catch a huge break here and only see a yellow card instead of a red. You can see just long ball up top by Kai Wagner, Julian Kranza taken out by Amundsen all over him. And just a huge miss by Mikel Ua. All right, so the last thing that we're going to point out is just some big saves by Andre Blake in this game was the Union's best player on the night. Five key saves that led to the Union going into the half tied nil-nil. Uh, the first chance here we're going to see is a chance by Cucho Hernandez. Uh, the Union are okay here, just allowing Columbus to pass the ball around, possessing the ball. As long as the Union can keep their shape, they're fine. And so not going to get too much pressure into the ball. Columbus just making runs into space, looking for that open pass. And we're going to see Nate Harry will give Cucho Hernandez a little bit of space there, gets a shot off. Andre Blake comes up with a big save. It's a save that he should be making regardless, but Kucher is the type of player that doesn't need much space, finds a little pocket to get that shot off, and it forces Andre Blake to make a big save here to keep this game leveled. 
You can see Kucho Hernandez knows exactly where he wants to aim this. Andre Blake has it covered the whole time. Chance number two I'm going to have here. Uh, Columbus just doing a good job working the ball, working the ball. Darlington Nagby into Aiden Morris, back to Darlington Nagby. Again, Union okay allowing this, allowing Columbus to possess the ball. But what happens here, you have Damian Lowe and Jack Elliott both step to Cucho Hernandez, which then allows Matan to run into open space, and that's exactly where Columbus are going to find him here into this pass because both Jack Elliott and Damian Lowe attacked the ball. Nobody followed the run of Martin, and he's able to get a shot off here. Again, this is a shot that you expect Andre Blake to save, but because of the miscommunication there between the two center backs, it allows Matan to get wide open and forces Andre Blake to save this ball, put it out for a corner. Chance number three here by the Union. And you're going to see Jack Elliott actually pointing to Bedoya or Jesus Bueno saying, hey, look, here's Cucho Hernandez. You pay attention to him. Jack Elliott knows where he's at. It's not like Jack Elliott's clueless. He's aware of where he is, but he's passing on that responsibility to one of the midfielders. And we're going to see Kucho come in and come in behind and have a chance. You can see Jack Elliott, Damian Lowe, both ball watching. Kucho is going to run in behind Jack Elliott, get past Ale Bedoya. And the reason I wanted to point out Elliott pointing out where Kucho is, he knew where he was, but he was expecting one of the midfielders to follow him with Jack Elliott paying attention to where the ball is. So he has no idea that Kucho is making this run in behind. And this is a huge save by Andre Blake. Columbus should have been up 1-0. And you can see the ball stays in play. The Union still have to defend this. And uh, they do a good job defending this, not allowing Columbus to score a goal here. But it's a, it's a communication issue there by the Union players. Just Somebody has to follow Kucho Hernandez. Jack Elliott could have been the guy, but he's expecting one of the midfielders to pick him up. Olivier Baizo gives out the free kick right on the edge of the box right here. Union catch a huge break. You can just see again the replay. Kucho making that late run in behind. He's free. Andre Blake aware of it. Makes a good save. Chance number four here by Columbus off of a set piece. Union do a good job initially clearing this, but in Jack McGlynn's Going to be playing with the ball in the back. It's a ball stolen off his foot. And now Columbus just keeping the pressure on the Union and forces Andre Blake into a huge save on Uboa. Jack McGlynn's got to do a better job just clearing this ball out, forcing Andre Blake to make a save that he shouldn't have had to have made. But Andre Blake was aware of all of Columbus's chances on the night and kept the Union in this match.